Welcome to Cover Design Studio and thank you for choosing us for your cover. In this video we walk you through designing your Kindle cover using Photoshop. You'll also learn how to prepare the files for submission to Amazon. To design your cover you'll need three things. Photoshop, your design file from our website, and your manuscript's copyright page. If you don't have Photoshop you can download the free version that's good for a month at adobe.com. They don't ask for a credit card number or your personal information, so it's an easy way to give their products a test drive. Let's get started. First, you'll need to locate your design file, the one you downloaded. So go to File Open and select the file that's a TIFF extension, .tiff. Other extensions will be available in here, but only the TIFF will work in Photoshop. If you get a pop-up box like this, click Update. If you get asked to flatten or don't flatten or merge or don't merge, pick don't flatten or don't merge. So the first thing we're going to do here is go ahead and save our own version of this. So we'll go to File, Save As. To create a working version and we'll change this to the name of our book. I like to leave the word Kindle on the end. For the example, the book will be called The Star Namer. Star Namer. We can save that as a TIFF. And if you have the option down here, keep it as an RGB file and click Save. And LZW compression works. Click OK. And then take a look at your window and make sure that you have open the layers right here, the characters, and the tools over on the left. If you don't, just go to Window and select them Character, Layers, Tools. And you may also want to open this ruler. You can do that by going to View and just make sure that ruler is checked. Okay, and some of you may see on here, running down the middle, you have a guide. That's just for your reference only. That's not something that's going to show up in your final product. So you can use it as a guide or you can ignore it. Over here, we have all of the different text elements that correspond with the text on the cover. And you highlight each layer in order to change it. And we'll show you how to do that. The first thing I want you to do, though, is go find the line that says Copyright and we'll take care of that. Then you need to locate that layer on your page and sometimes it can be hard to find but it's a copyright notice and here it's down in the corner. So we'll select text, the T, and then let's zoom in so we can get a better look at this. Okay, so this is the copyright notice. Copy and paste into your book's copyright page, original and modified cover art by the artist's name and CoverDesignStudio.com. So let's highlight what's in between the quotations and copy it. So go right click copy or you can go edit copy. And then open up your manuscript and go to the copyright page and paste it in. And I like to make sure that the typeface is the same and the point size is the same as the rest of the text in the document, or at least on that page. You can hit save and close that. And then so that we don't have to see this copyright notice and that it doesn't show up in your final product, go click the I over in the layers and that'll make it disappear. And now we can't see it anymore. Okay, so now we're ready to start changing the text. So go ahead and first select the book title. And you can see that these are two different sizes of text. So we always recommend you change them one line at a time so you don't lose the formatting. So my book is called The Star Namer, so I don't need to change the first word. Just highlight this and change the words. If you don't need the word the, just delete it. Or if there's other small words that you don't need, you can delete them as well. Okay, let's go to the top and just work our way down here. Let's see, change this to definitive guide. Next one is the author name. I'm Stacy Vanderpaul. So I'll put my name in. The next layer is the copyright, which we already took care of. 
The next line looks like it corresponds up here. This is a place where you can put a quote or a blurb or an endorsement. If you don't have those and I don't, um, you can just put a small description. So let's say everything you need to know about naming your own stars, including list of recommended organizations. Organizations. That works. Okay, it looks like the next line is author information, information about the author. I'm going to write night sky gazer and star naming expert. Okay. So the next line is for the subtitle or description. If you don't have a subtitle or if your subtitle is longer than then we'll work on your design. You can just write a description such as this one. The universe is your oyster. A tagline almost. Okay, we have got that layer. The next layer, the last item, is for the starburst. And most of our designs don't have them, but if yours does, we'll show you how to do this. You highlight the text. And this is where you would put an award that you'd won or been nominated for, but if your book's just being published, you probably don't have that. This book has never been published, so we're going to just write the most complete resource on the topic. If it were for fiction, you could say something like an incredible story of hope and triumph. Okay, so this looks pretty good, but let's say for some reason this didn't quite work for you. For example, let's say your author name is a little longer than what is meant for the layout. For example, let's say I'm Jonathan Lee Vanderpaul. You can see that the name is stretching out too far. It's pushing out to the margins and taking up more space on the page than it should. So the way we resolve an issue like that is go up to the letter spacing right here. And you can see that the letters in this line are spaced at 100. If we want those letters closer together, we just choose a lower number. In this case, we'll just choose zero. And you can see that that instantly brings the letters closer to one another and they fit nicely on the page again. And you can do the same thing if you have a long title, for example, one that's a little bigger than was meant for the design. We'll click negative 75 because that was already at zero. I'll go ahead and click edit undo to go back. Another solution that you have is to change the point size of the text. If, if your title really is too long and not fitting, you can make the point size of the letter smaller. We really recommend that as a last resort though because it's gonna to start to change the way that your cover looks. And the point sizes were chosen specifically for the designs. So once you've looked it over, you need to proofread it obviously for spelling errors and punctuation errors. And if there's anything that you need to move around, say you wanna move the title to a different location, you just select that layer and then click the move tool and you can move it to where you want. If you don't like where you moved it to, you can click Edit Undo. And the other thing you may want to change in the title is the spacing of some of the letters. This is called kerning, and it refers to the space between individual letters. Sometimes there appears to be more space between some letters than others. So what you do is click the text tool, highlight the letters that need to be moved to the right, and go over to the letter spacing option. And again, like we did before, just choose a lower number. And you can see how that tucks those letters in closer to the word and it looks more balanced. So depending on your typeface and the letter combinations you have, you may have a lot of kerning to do or none. Either way, it really only is necessary in the larger letters of your title. So when you're satisfied with the way everything looks and you have everything proofread and checked, go ahead and hit File, Save. And now all we need to do is embed the fonts. And so we'll create a different file with embedded fonts. File, save as, and I'll type embed. The reason we do this is once they're embedded, they can't be changed. That's why we, we keep the original file so that if we find an error, we can change it. So you want TIFF and RGB, click save, LZW is okay. 
And now that we have this file that's the embedded file, let's go ahead and embed the text. So just go to Layer, Flatten Image. For some of you, this will say Flatten Layers. Click OK. Then you can see what happens in your Layers panel. It all turns into one image that cannot be edited, but you still have your old file in case you need to do that. Now what we'll do is save it as a JPEG so that you have a file that can be submitted to Amazon. And you do that by going to File, Save As. Instead of a TIFF, you choose JPEG. Keep the RGB if you have the choice and click Save. You want 12 maximum, so this is a very high quality image. And you're done. This is the JPEG file that you'll submit to Amazon uh, for your Kindle book. Congratulations.